How's it going, guys? It is episode 8, I believe, of our rapid rating climb on Lee Chess. We're going from 1,000 to 2,000 Lee Chess rating points. We have a Vienna. I'm a happy man. And we'll see how our opponent responds. Now, Knight F6 leads into the Vienna Gambit with F4. And we're going to play it. We're going to plug Gotham Chess real quick. Gotham Chess. Levy Rosman, thank you for the E4 course, which includes the Vienna Gambit. I'd highly recommend. And he plays D6. So we're going to play Knight F3, which just pressures the E5 pawn. Oh my god. Bru there we go. E5 pawn twice. He has one defender. And we're saying, look, bro, look, you know, you're going to lose the pawn. Just take us. Just take us. And if he takes us, we're going to play d4. We're going to take the full center and open the bishop up to attack the pawn. Kind of like a king's gambit. He doesn't. He defends his pawn again. And so we're just going to keep developing. We're just going to develop like nothing's happening. Bishop c4. We want to go d3. D3. Uh, h6 stops knight g5 because we maybe are threatening some fried liver type stuff. And I'm expecting bishop to g4, trying to pin our knight to our queen. And there's some potential tactics with taking on f7 and moving the knight with a check on the king and an attack on the bishop. But that only works in certain lines where the bishop comes to g4, the knight comes to d4, um, and then we could actually get that. Let me think a second. Yeah, it's castle. So we're hoping for knight d4. If knight d4, we're going to take, take, bishop takes. He doesn't give us that. But... But, 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 we can take this anyway. And if he takes back, we go for the same tactic, right? If we take here and he takes our bishop, I think we might be able to take that knight. Because this knight will be hanging. It probably will go to e5 to attack our knight. Oh, this is complicated. Now, we could just play the simple bishop b3. But. So, this, this, we have the tactic of bishop takes f7, right? We've established that. So, if he takes here, he can't take back. He has to take our bishop. Oh, my God. So, f takes e5. Knight takes c4. We take the bishop back, he's going to take here. And then, actually, we trade the queens and then win e5. So that's, that, that should still be good. Now, I think our opponent is just going to take. That's what I'm expecting. And fall for the bishop takes f7 trap. So let's see. So yeah, after this, I think we can just take that. And then here, there, there, there. And he falls for it. So the point is, bishop takes f7 check. And what it allows us to do is move our knight to attack the bishop, open our queen upon the bishop, but it comes with a check. Which means this bishop doesn't have time to take our queen. Danger levels. The king's under attack. So black can't take our queen. And then we're going to go up two pawns. Because we just won the e pawn after knight takes here, and the f pawn after bishop takes there, and then we won the bishop back on g4. So we're up two pawns, two central pawns at that. So we've got a lot more central space. Black is going to struggle because this knight is out of the game. This rook is going to struggle to get into the game. He needs to castle manually now. This bishop can be a good piece on this diagonal, potentially. It's not really threatening. We could also potentially play bishop e3 to shut that down. 
So yeah, bishop e3 here might make sense. But I think it... Because the problem with bishop e3 is knight... Oh my, bishop e3, knight takes knight. If we take the knight back, then he wins the bishop. So bishop e3, knight there, bishop takes there. Queen to h4, targets h3. But then, uh, h2, sorry. But then h3 attacks the knight, and the knight's kicked out. So I think, I think that's probably good. And if he takes, then we just take back with um, the knight. And then our knight's going to come to like f5, and it's going to be very, very nice. All sorts of nice things are going to happen. So let's see. So yeah, here, 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 h3. Now, he might be able to play h5 and try and open up this battery. But that's only if we take. We don't have to take. Okay. He drops back. Now, a lot of you will be suggesting e5 here with a fork. But e5, knight takes knight. We can't take the bishop because he takes our bishop here and gives us a nasty fork. So e5, knight takes. We've got to take the bishop. Then he just retreats. And I like on His knight looks good in that situation. So I'm just going to take force. Whoa. Dude. That's a free queen. Well, apparently, apparently, g takes f6 is not forced. <laughs> Clearly it isn't. As our opponent just demonstrated. But the point point is after here we give a check king moves we can maybe win this pawn but the knight's coming in our bishop might even be heading to this diagonal at some point this is pretty crushing that was a solid game we didn't get our vienna gambit and i'm not going to spoil what we would have done if he took because um you can find that in levy's course which again I do recommend. And Gotham Chess does not sponsor this, so um, please leave those accusations at home. Yeah, d4 is recommended, but the whole point of the setup, bishop there, I suppose that does give this trick. But I kind of like this position. Like, this is good to me. In what, it's equal material. This pawn is really weak. We've got some active pieces. Computer gives zeros, but... I don't think it's that simple. Besides, I don't think anyone's ever played that against me. If you look at the um, moves here, Knight takes e4 is played in less than 1% of the games. Like, you know, it's very unlikely to happen. And in the Masters database, it's never been played, which is surprising. So anyway, h6, d3. Now knight takes here doesn't work because we have pawn takes. So d5 doesn't come with a fork. Bishop g4, castle. Now, in a lot of these positions where the bishop comes here, h3 is the best move. But this leads to position like this a lot of the time which I'm just not really a fan of um, I'm, I'm not that fussed of it but here yeah our instinct was correct we should have taken here first now my idea was in this situation after here I wasn't sure about this but apparently you move the queen and you're good my idea was to do this. I wonder why the computer doesn't like it. Oh, that's why. See, if it weren't for that maneuver, say he plays a move like uh, castles. 
Oh, well, that hangs a piece. Okay, so let's say the bishop retreats. Then we're good. Then we're, 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 in, we're in nice shape. So that's what I was seeing. But our opponent takes back. We have this tactic. We win the piece. Prefers king h1, but bishop e3 is nice and to the point. Like I say, the idea was after takes, we take back like this. And if takes there, we take here, queen here, h3, h5. If we take this, we give black a lot of play. The computer wants knight d5, it just does not care. I suppose because we control f8 with two pieces, there's no rook coming there, so we're probably fine after this. Oh, and the knight takes up f4, which is nice. But there's no need to allow that. I was just going to... I don't know, play some other move and just ignore it because he's not actually threatening anything. Queen f3 stops queen g3 to try and sneak into h2. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But again, he retreats. e5, like I said, doesn't really work because... Oh, we actually can't take that because we're going to win it back. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, but yeah, taking... Is that better? Yeah, it's better. Because you damage the pawn structure, but our opponent just gives us a queen. And that takes us up to 1407. 1407. We are getting ever closer to 2000. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please drop a like and subscribe. But with that, I'll see you in the next one.